gardens give us the opportunity to introduce a wide variety of aquatic plant material into our garden. They also invite wildlife such as dragonflies, frogs, and birds to our landscape. Now if you don't have the space or inclination to install a large water garden like this, you can still enjoy these benefits by creating a containerized water garden. We want to start by selecting an appropriate container. Now this is the one time I won't say be sure your container has drainage holes. Uh, we certainly want it to hold water. We can select a variety of repurposed items like an old bathtub, a lined whiskey barrel, or a farm trough. Or you could purchase a container like we have here. You want to make sure that it's large enough to hold uh, 15 to 25 gallons of water or more and that it's at least 10 inches deep. Selecting something with a dark interior like this can help create the illusion of depth and it also helps with controlling algae. Now remember, a gallon of water weighs over eight pounds. So we don't want to fill this and then put it in place. We want to find its location first and then fill it with water. And we want to make sure that wherever we choose to put our container is going to be able to support the weight of all that water. Now I'm in the ground, which is fine, but if you're on a deck or another structure, make sure it's strong enough to support the weight of a filled container. Most of our aquatic plants want to have at least six hours of direct sun. There's a few bog plants that you can find which will tolerate some shade, so if sun's limited, look for those. We want to think of our water garden as a miniature ecosystem that has plants and water and wildlife such as fish or insects uh, or even frogs. And together, these help create a balanced system. Now, it can take several weeks for a water garden to come into balance, but once it does, the plants and the animals help to keep that system in balance and limit algal growth. It does that by shading the water and also competing with algae for nutrients that might be in that water. Now when we're selecting plants, we want to think about uh, creating a nice diverse planting, the same we would if we were just potting up a container. And I like to start with a showy plant that that's uh, at the water surface. And for that, I'm gonna be using a water lily. This is called Joey Tomasic. And uh, once it gets in the water, it'll certainly perk up a bit. and It'll have a beautiful yellow flower. Add to that an emergent element that creates some height. I'm using a blue pickerel for that. You can also use cattails or irises, uh, rushes. And many of our tropical foliage plants also do the job. Uh, here we have um, elephant ears and in the back is a papyrus and both of these will create that tall element. And then we might add in some filler. I'm using a corkscrew rush. Uh, in another one we have water parsley. And this will just um, fill out the bottom part of the container. Now before you fill your container, it's important to consider the water source. Many of our municipal water supplies contain chlorine. And if that's the case, you want to fill your container and allow 24 to 48 hours for the chlorine in the water to evaporate. It's also important to avoid water that's been treated with a softener because this can have a very high salt content. Aquatic plants can be potted in a variety of media and no two water gardeners will agree on uh, what to use, uh, but we'll look at a few things. What we want to avoid is using our commercial potting mix that we might use in our containers up, up on our patio. That mixture is made for good drainage and it's really developed for pots. In the water garden it's too light, it'll float up out of our containers and it also doesn't hold nutrients very well. So the materials that we do want to use, one option is to just use a real heavy clay soil uh, such as many Oklahoma gardeners have in their backyard. Uh, other options include pea gravel and if you have goldfish in your garden you can use the real small size pea gravel but if you have uh, koi they tend to pick up a bit of the gravel and so we want to look for the larger type. We can also utilize cat litter and what we want to find is just the pure clay litter not any that are treated with chemicals such as a deodorizer uh, because that can cause some trouble but this is really essentially clay and it's going to create that nice heavy clay substrate for our plants to grow in. 
individual plants are potted in their own container like this and then those containers are set down into the larger container water garden. Now sometimes I might make an exception for this. Here I have a large papyrus and some lotus and this was really too big for an individual container. So what I did is plant it directly into our water garden container and I did this by filling the bottom with gravel and placing our papyrus and filling the gravel in around it so that it reached the crown of the plant. Now when we plant this way, the one challenge is it's not as easy to clean that water out as if the plants were potted in separate containers. Okay, so we're gonna pot up a, our water lily. And I start by filling our container two thirds of the way with, in this case, I'm using the kitty litter. And then I wet it so that it's nice and damp. Now we're actually experimenting with two different types of media in our water gardens to compare them. One of the problems with kitty litter is sometimes it makes the water cloudy. So we're going to try kitty litter in some of our containers and um, pea gravel in others. Okay, I want to rinse off the clay, but this is essentially what a clay substrate would look like if you were just using a clay garden soil. Uh, once it's wet, it's going to get real thick like this, and it, it tends to stay in place pretty well because it's so heavy. Uh, but since I'm moving to kitty litter, I'm going to pull some of that off and go ahead and rinse off the rest of it. Now, water lilies have a rhizome, which we can see right in here. Um, and it has eyes kind of like a potato, and that's where the plant emerges from. These tend to be fairly uh, hardy plants. Now, if you're working with a lotus, you want to be a little bit more careful because they're fairly sensitive. Okay, that's good enough. Okay. So I've already wet the uh, substrate in my container, and if you notice, let me move that out of the way, uh, this container is basically a basket with a lot of holes. Um, and those holes allow water to come in and reach the roots, but it's, those holes are small enough to keep the kitty litter or other substrate in place. I'm spreading the roots out a fair amount in that litter and setting the rhizome so that it's kind of angling down with that growing point facing up. And in fact, I'm just gonna dig that in, a little bit of a hole here so that I can set it down a little deeper. Um, try to protect any foliage that's on by just draping them over the edge of the basket. And then we can fill the rest of the way with our substrate. Okay. We want to fill it to a point that it comes up around that crown, but the top of the crown is still emerging above, and we can see that here. It's got a little bit of a litter on it, but that crown's above the substrate level. And the next thing we wanna do is top this off with some of the pea gravel. That'll just create a little bit of weight to help hold that litter in place. And when you get a pea gravel, it tends to have a lot of dust on it, so I like to just rinse it off and clean it up a little bit before I use it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just create a nice thick layer on the surface, which will help keep my, my litter in place. Now once we have these all potted up individually, we can go and set those into our larger container. I wanna clean a little bit of the extra um, mud, clay, and, and litter off of the container just to help keep my water clean. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start filling our container. Now I have a really deep container and I don't need the plants to all be at the base. So I'm gonna use some bricks to elevate these a little bit. My water lily can take water uh, about 12 to 18 inches above its crown. But some of our marginal plants uh, like the pickerel, they need to be a little bit higher. Um, they can tolerate about four to eight inches of water above the crown. And then water lotuses are right in the middle, somewhere between eight, eight to 10, or six to 10 inches of water above their growing crown. So let me set 
the water lily in and then I will uh, adjust my bricks as needed. I think that'll be about right. That's about six inches. And then the rush. And one of the things I'm doing with my container is putting the taller stuff towards the back of the view um, just to allow that lily to be more dramatic. Now as I fill this, some of these leaves are fairly small right now um, and the stems are short, so they might be underwater initially, but the stems will emerge and carry that foliage up to the water's surface. So don't worry about that as you install your garden. Remember to include a variety of material for interest and as the garden matures, we want enough foliage in there so that we shade about 50 to 60 percent of the water surfaces with that foliage. And what this will do is cool the water and help manage algae. We can also introduce wildlife into our garden, uh, either snails or goldfish. Snails will eat algae. They also eat uh, fish waste and decaying matter and they help keep the water clean and goldfish will eat uh, mosquito eggs that get laid in our water garden. If you're using goldfish, about one to two for a container this size is really all that that system can handle. Now remember, it's gonna take a couple of weeks to come into balance. In about two weeks, you might notice that the water becomes cloudy with algae, but give it time, it'll clean up uh, in about another week, and we'll have a nice clean system for you to enjoy and hopefully it'll draw in some birds and other wildlife into your landscape.